Australian spiders, for all the terror they seem to instill in the minds of gullible foreigners on social media, are for the most part a pretty mediocre bunch. That's not to say they aren't intriguing, remarkable, fascinating, or any other cliché piece of vocabulary you'll hear in every nature documentary ever filmed. They just don't really stand out quite as much as the internet, and for that matter many of my fellow Australians would have you believe. Our huntsmen, infamous for their size, can even toward the upper limits of their enormity fit comfortably in one of my hands with ample room to spare. And much as I love my huntsmen, I rather struggle to be wowed by their dimensions when I know that stuff like this exists overseas. But perhaps at least part of my indifference towards Australian spiders stems from familiarity. Having lived alongside them for much of my life, oftentimes getting up very close and personal, perhaps occasionally a little too close and personal, it's difficult to see Aussie spiders as anything but ordinary. Yet for those who've come across the seas and haven't spent the last few years shoving a camera in the face of what feels like half the spiders in the country, the prospect of encountering some of Australia's most famous arachnids may be considerably more exciting. And that was exactly the case for a couple of my companions on one of my latest and biggest adventures. Recently I headed down to Sydney to meet up with fellow wildlife content creators Spencer from My Wild Backyard and Jack from Jack's World of Wildlife who had travelled here from the United States to film some of this country's most iconic animals. And several of the major targets were spiders. Of those, two in particular were high on the list, both being spiders that have garnered worldwide recognition, but for reasons that could not be more different. One is among the most endearing spiders in all the lands, its charm and whimsy capable of winning the hearts of all but the most staunch of arachnophobes. The other is anything but. Notorious the world over, the subject of countless terrifying tales, and an oft-cited reason for hastily crossing the land down under off of one's bucket list. And these polar opposites on the spectrum of Australian spiders can both be found in the rugged bushlands that girdle the city of Sydney. Having a target species or two when one embarks on a foray is all very well. But every bit as rewarding as finding the big prize itself is the adventure along the way. And though I may have wished for fairer weather to have accompanied us on the road, it had taken more than a few cold showers to dampen our spirits, and far more than a grey sky to dull the irrepressible allure of the forest. On either side of the path, eucalypts rise, standing rank upon rank for countless leagues beyond sight. Some grow tall, grand and mighty, in the likeness of pillars hewn and polished by the most masterful hands of man. Others are stunted, twisted and gnarled, though in their chaotic structure and disorderly growth there is yet a strange beauty. Beneath them, native blooms, intricate in form and vibrant in colour, carpet the forest floor. They are luxuriant glamour utterly undampened by the sombre skies above. Indeed, in a world dimmed by dark clouds unbroken, their beauty shines perhaps all the brighter. And amongst their foliage, the smaller denizens of the forest creep and crawl. A pair of assassin bugs, in the midst of intimacy and putting the double ass into assassin, slowly amble through the greenery. Assassin bugs are fierce predators that stab their prey with needle-like mouthparts, though in this particular case it seems that it's the other end that's doing the penetration. Upon another shrub rests a swift terror of the skies, Hemicordulia, a type of dragonfly, and nearby sits a pair of sap-sucking leafhoppers almost entirely obscured by swarming ants. But this is not, as you might think, a massacre, but a mutualism, with the leafhoppers periodically excreting a sweet honeydew that the ants relish. And in return for this tasty treat, the ants provide the otherwise defenceless insects with an entomological entourage that guards them against foes great and small. On the ground below stands a large and exceptionally bumpy weevil, possibly of the genus Sapphirus. Slow and sluggish and with a strong tendency to play dead when threatened, a behaviour properly known as thanatosis, it's an easy, albeit far from exhilarating, subject to capture on film. 
As myself and my eager companions pressed on, the long, winding road finally took us to an ideal spot to hunt for the first of our quarries. Jumping spiders are among the most numerous and ubiquitous of all arachnids. There are over 6,000 described species, divided into hundreds of separate genera, and one particular genus largely endemic to Australia is especially noteworthy, Maratus, in the common tongue known as the peacock spiders. Over a hundred different Maratus species have been described from all over the country, each as splendid and flamboyant as the last. And these flashy little characters, allegedly commonplace in these rugged lands, are what we had come to find. But no matter how vibrant and iridescent the colours may be, finding something as diminutive as a peacock spider in the dense and tangled undergrowth is no small feat. But thankfully, if you know where to look, you can make things just a little easier. We homed in upon a patch of bare open ground at the base of a large tree. Here, twigs, branches and long twisted strips of bark shed from the tree's mighty trunks lay strewn upon the earth, providing an ideal habitat for Maratus. And the relative scarcity of shrubbery and undergrowth beneath the tree made it easy for us to hunt for these miniature spiders with little obstruction and it wasn't long before we found our target. This enchanting little creature, just a few millimetres in length, is Maratus volans, one of the most familiar members of its genus. It's an adult male, as evidenced by his dazzling colours. This wondrous visage is further augmented by countless tiny reflective scales covering his body, giving him an iridescence that shines bright and vibrant, even in the perpetual gloom of the undergrowth. But of course, he doesn't sport these flashy colours to cater to the whims of photographers and YouTubers. It's the breeding season, and he is on the lookout for a mate. Jumping spiders lead tragically short lives, so there is no time to spare for this spidery sweeter. Finding a mate in this dense, tangled world is no small feat. When you're the size of a grain of rice, every piece of fallen debris is an obstacle. And that's not even getting started on the numerous predators that stalk amongst the countless nooks and crannies. Myomecia, armed with vicious mandibles and a venomous sting to boot, hunts tirelessly and relentlessly, and a single strike from its fell jaws could cleave the tiny Maratus asunder. In the sand below, a predatory bug lies in ambush, waiting to seize an unwary victim with its powerful forelimbs. If the terrain and predators don't make things difficult enough, female Maratus are a challenge to spot even at the best of times, for they lack the flashy ornamentation of the males, instead being drably coloured in various shades of brown. But should the eight-legged bachelor find one, he will soon commence the act that has earned these critters the name of Peacock Spider. His abdomen, already a sight to behold, will be raised and unfurled to reveal its true splendour. And if that's not enough, this marvellous display is accompanied by a most endearing dance. Like all jumping spiders, Maratus have excellent eyesight, so it's no surprise that their courtship rituals are, for the most part, a visual spectacle, unlike the largely touch and vibration centred courting behaviour of many other spiders like these huntsmen. And their keen vision plays a part in more than just their dance routines, it's key to their prowess as hunters. Jumping spiders are not sit-and-wait predators like so many of their kindred. They are active, energetic hunters that stalk and eventually leap onto their prey. And for this, acute vision and depth perception is a must, for even the slightest misjudgement of distance could cause the spider to lose its meal, or worse, become one itself. With the hunt for Maratus a resounding success, it was now time to turn our attention to the other big spider target. And while this particular walk was fruitless in that regard, the spider would not elude us forever. So we've seen the peacock spider, one of the most endearing little creatures here in Australia. But Australia hosts a wide variety of spiders and some could not be more different. Now, I have spent a lot of time on this channel saying that even the most feared and deadly spiders really aren't quite what they're hyped up to be, 
And now it's time to put my money where my mouth is in the most radical and kind of stupid way possible. This is a male Atrax Robustus, the infamous Sydney Funnel Web Spider. And I am going to be getting as close and personal as one can possibly get with this awe-inspiring spider. Now, of course, I do not recommend that anyone else do this, but I have had years of experience being a fucking idiot, so I'm gonna go for it. There we have it. Atrax Robustus, the Sydney Funnel Web. Over the course of their long, uneventful lives, funnel web spiders move very little. Ever do they skulk in their silken fastness, crude yet intricate, simple yet effective. But there comes a time when some must leave their age-long abodes and venture forth into the great outdoors. In the warmer, wetter months of the year, male Atrax robustus, newly matured and ready to breed, emerge from their slumber to live out their final chapter as horny nomads on a ceaseless search for mates. Upon maturing, some of the spider's features change quite dramatically. They develop a notably lanky build, making them a good deal more lightweight and mobile than the sedentary juveniles and females. And their pedipalps, those small appendages in front of the legs, gain swollen tips known as palpal bulbs within which the spider's magic fluid is contained. But out of sight beneath the surface, another, particularly noteworthy change has taken place. When a male Atrax Robustus reaches maturity, the potency of his venom peaks dramatically, becoming many times more toxic than that possessed by his female counterparts. For us humans, the particular component that makes his venom such a nasty brew is a compound called Delta Atracotoxin, or alternatively, Robustoxin, which, by what is likely to be a freak chance of nature, happens to be especially virulent against primates, including, of course, ourselves. And while the uh, lethality of their bites is often overstated, with only a relative minority causing severe symptoms, the male Atrax Robustus has nevertheless claimed several human lives prior to the introduction of an effective anti-venom a little over 40 years ago. With all that said, you're probably wondering why in the name of Sauron I'd even think about handling such a spider. Surely if the goal is to show how spiders are misunderstood creatures that aren't out to hurt us, there's got to be other ways to drive home that message. Well, the above sentiment has been present, both subtly and overtly, in basically every spider-focused video I've ever uploaded. But most of the time, the exemplars are huntsmen, or perhaps jumping spiders and orb weavers, all spiders that are generally understood to be inoffensive and low risk, even by those who fear them. On the other hand, a close demonstration with one of the most notorious spiders anywhere in the world a species that many believe is actively aggressive, seeking out confrontation with humans and biting as soon as the chance arises, has the potential to give the typical spiders aren't out to get you message a lot more oomph, so to speak. And look, I won't deny that handling a funnel web spider is something of a foolhardy venture. But after years of telling my viewers that funnel webs aren't aggressive and won't go out of their way to bite you, I might as well put my hands where my mouth is. Okay, that came out sounding slightly dirty, but I said what I said. So I think we can safely say that the hunt for the peacock and funnel web spiders was an incredible success. Not only did we find our targets, we had a chance to get up close and personal on a level well beyond our expectations. And just as I said toward the beginning of the video, the adventure along the way was every bit as worthwhile as the climax, leading to surprise encounters with an all manner of incredible animals and plants. If you want to see more of these little forays in the wilderness down under, then here's a couple videos you can check out. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any upcoming content. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.